Okay, now for question number 11 from C34 of January 2019, International A-Level. A question here about, what are they called again? The inverse trig functions. <clears throat> and uh, also about iteration and numerical methods of the second part B and C. Now part A, it says given that the function f of x is between 0 and pi, uh, sketch the graph of y equals f of x where f of x equals arc of cosine x minus 1. Now arc cosine is basically the inverse of cosine x. Sometimes it's written like this. Okay. That's, that's how it's written sometimes. So that's what arc cosine is. It's the inverse, the, the inverse of the cosine. Okay, so for example, when you have, um, you know, cosine x equals a half, all right, what we say is we say, okay, inverse cosine of x, of, of a half, sorry, is equal to x. That's how we find the angle. Okay, so we say x is equal to the inverse cosine of a half. Okay, so it's like the inverse function of cosine x. Okay, so sometimes you say inverse cosine, but a lot of mathematicians, they like to use arc cosine instead of inverse cosine to save confusion. So they put arc, arc cosine of a half instead of cosine minus one half. It means the same thing. It's the inverse function for cosine. Okay, so basically what you do is when, you, when you're sketching the, the co co cosine curve, Okay, this is how the cosine curve looks, all right? Between zero and pi, the cosine curve, it starts from one, it goes through 90 degrees, zero, and at pi, it goes to minus one. So it looks something like this. This is how the cosine curve looks between zero and pi, okay? The inverse cosine curve is basically the cosine curve, um, uh, the inverse of it, so basically the x, x axis becomes a y axis and the y axis becomes the x axis. So in fact, it's going to look something like this. Let me draw it down here a little bit so we've got space. So it's actually going to look something like this. So first I'm going to draw arc cosine of x. First I'm going to draw uh, y equals arc cosine of x. And then I'll do this um, arc cosine x minus 1. So basically, it's, this is now your, when you're drawing the inverse of a function, your x-axis becomes your y-axis and your y-axis becomes your x-axis. So I'm going to have here the minus 1 and 1. And here I'm going to have 0. And I'm going to have pi over 2 and I'm going to have pi. Okay, pi. Okay, between 0 and pi. So it's going to be looking something like this. Go like that, I like that. Let me just try and make it a bit better. It's a bit more rounded there. It goes like this and like this. It's not very good drawing. Okay, so that's the that's the y equals that's r y equals arc cosine x. Now what we want to draw is f of x equals arc cosine of x minus one, which is basically compared to this, it's where you have to shift one space to the right. All the x values move one space okay, to the right because it's like um, something like this where you, it's, you, you're subtracting one inside the function therefore everything moves to the right one space. That's why it wants us to draw, draw between 0 and 2. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this a bit longer. Okay, that's my x-axis there. So I know it's going to shift along one space to the right. So basically this is going to go like that. Okay, it's going to go through pi and through two. And this point is the point where it normally go through the, the y-axis, it's over there. Okay, so this is how it should look, something like that. Okay, I'm going to tidy up a bit to make it look a bit neater. Okay, you should try and sketch a bit more neater than that. So it's like the sine curve, so the cosine curve, on its side okay but shifted this way so that's how it should look so that's f of x equals arc cosine of x minus one okay so that's just 
my steps there. Okay, so yeah, that's fine. So I've just crossed that bit out in case you think it's that's your answer. And there we have our curve. It should look something like that. That's that's going to be pi. So we've drawn it between um, f of x is between zero and pi. Okay, and we can see x is between zero and two here. So we've drawn the sketch of this function. Okay, that's f of x equals arc cosine x minus one. Okay, they kind of helped us out with these limits here to see how we should draw it, but that's basically how it goes. All right, now part B says the equation arc cosine x minus one minus tan x has a single root alpha. Show that alpha is between 0 0.9 and 1.1. So basically all we have to do here is we have to say let f of x equal arc or well, let me call it something something else. Let me say g of x. So it separates it from the one above. So let g of x equals arc cosine x minus 1 minus tan x. Now if there's a root for this equation, okay, then basically uh, we the root of this equation is the value of x for which this equation equals zero, where the, the you know where the, where the basically where the solution of this equation is. So if the root is between 0 0.9 and 1.1, .1, somewhere between them, then basically wherever this crosses the x-axis, okay, just supposing it's going like this, we don't know. Supposing it crosses the x-axis at this point, okay, if that point, if that root where it crosses the x-axis, that's the root, is between 0 0.9 and 1.1, .1, then somewhere between 0 0.9 and 1.1 .1, it's going to cross the x-axis so there will be the sign when you put x equals 0 0.9 in the function will be different than the sign when you put 1.1 .1 inside the function okay because at one point it would be on one side of the uh, below the x-axis the other one will be above or vice versa okay so that means it would have crossed the x-axis between those two points so i'm going to put in 0 0.9 inside this function okay so I have arc cosine of 0 0.9 minus 1 minus tan of 0 0.9 and I'll see what I get and I'm going to put 1.1 .1 inside this function which will be arc cosine of 1.1 .1 minus 1 minus the tan of 1.1 .1, and I'll see what I get. Okay now over here the angle is in radians, okay? So I'm going to calculate the mode. So shift mode radian is four. So now I'm going to substitute these values in. I'll put two calculators there. Okay, radian mode. Okay, so I've got inverse cosine, that's arc cosine of 0 0.9 minus one, which is um, minus 1.1. .1. Minus 0 0.1, sorry. Okay, minus the tan of 0 0.9. Okay, so that gives me 0 0.411. I'll just write it as a 3 or 7. 0 0.411. Okay, and when I put in, instead of 0 0.9, 1.1, let me just 1.1. Instead of 0 0.9, 1.1. Whoops, inverse cosine. 1.1 minus 1. That gives me a negative value. So it's minus 0 0.494. Minus 0 0.494. So we can say as, okay, um, there is a change of sign, a change of sign, okay, and it's a continuous function, function, therefore, um, Alpha is between 0 0.9 and 0 0.1. Okay, something like that. 
Okay, then it says the iteration formula xn plus 1 equals arctan times arc, arctan of arc cosine xn minus 1 can be used to try or can be used to find an approximation for alpha. Take x0 equals 1.1. Taking um, alpha uh, x0 equals 1.1, find to three decimal places the values for x1 and x2. So basically, x1 is going to be when you substitute x0 into here. So you're going to have arc tan of arc cosine 1.1 minus 1. And you see what that gives you. So you just stuff that, put that in your calculator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take 1.1 and I'll put equals and then I press answer. That's stored as an answer now. So when I do inverse tan, arc tan, whoops, inverse tan of inverse cosine of now, I'm going to put instead of um, 1.1, I'll put. I'll put um, answer. So I'm going to put the answer. So that was that right now that's 1.1 1 .1 minus 1. So I'm going to close this bracket and close the other bracket. I'll press equals. That will give me x1, which is 0 0.2, three decimal places, 0 0.974. So it's 0 0.974 to three decimal places. Okay, and then it says find x2. So x2, all I have to do now is just press equals again because it's going to substitute this value um, instead of the answer. So instead of this place, instead of 1.1, it's going to put 0 0.973 in this place, which is what we have to do. That's what you do when you do iteration. You keep putting the new value back in, okay, to the, to the point where x is. So uh, x0, I, I put x0 into there to find x1, and I put x1 into there to find x2, and I put x2 into there to find x3, and so on. So now I've got to put x1 into here to find x2. So x1 is this, which if I press equals, the, the way I've set up on the calculator, it's going to take my last answer and put it in this place. So I press equals again, it's going to give me 1.011. Okay, so x2 is 1.011. You don't need to write all those steps again. You can just show that the first time what you did, and then you can have your answers x1 and x2. And there we have the answer to this question number I think it was 11 yeah that's the answer to number 11